Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. Hasbana Allah wa ni'ma wakil. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows, and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. This morning, I have a very simple message to the President of the Republic. My simple message to the President of the Republic this morning, after calling on the President for more than a month, and now, as of last week, we were promised when I repeated that call that the President speaks to the nation. We were told that the President would speak to the nation before that week ended. It's been four days in this week. Exactly a week ago, I asked the President. So I say, please show up, Nana Showboy. Please show up, Nana Showboy. And you see, if you're a showboy and you don't show up, it means there's a problem. And if there's a problem, the people you are leading must be made to understand what the problem is. Because now people have their own sets of narratives. And when you leave that space, people will fill the space with their own narratives. So please show up, Nana Showboy. That's my theme for this morning. And Mr. President, I'm sure that you've heard what's happening in Parliament. Your cabinet minister, your favorite minister perhaps, Ghana's most famous TikToker, Ajwa Safu, still can't be reached even through Parliament. The last time she spoke on an Accra-based media, uh, media station, she said that you are aware and that if you were not happy, you would have kicked her out. Her ministry is a cabinet meeting. Uh, it's a cabinet ministry. 19 boys had been raped or sodomized in Kupi, JHS in the north by their social studies teacher. We have not concluded that matter. Children at the basic school do not have textbooks. We have not concluded that matter. Children at the basic schools can't be fed because we owe the caterers. And in fact, a, a few days ago, we had somebody from the Ministry of Gender, Children, and Social Protection asking the teachers to go, the, the caterers to still continue to cook for children who are not in school. I don't know if that makes sense. But again, there are children in secondary schools who can't find food to eat. Yet, we cannot reach our minister, who is a cabinet minister, and I can imagine the kind of impact and uh, effort and results we could have gotten if you were present and at your table discussing Thursday on Thursday when you have your cabinet meetings to find solutions to some of these lingering problems. Parliament cannot find her. And Parliament did not take my advice to serve her via TikTok. Because if you tried her office, it didn't work. You tried her email, it didn't work. You made phone calls, it didn't work. You tried to do a uh, substituted service, it didn't work. Try TikTok because the woman is on TikTok. Parliament didn't take my advice. Now, Parliament has concluded its work for giving to and could not take a definite decision as a committee on what should be done. The recommendations is, is there. Mr. President, have you also heard about the labor agitations that's going on? Because it's not enough for you to tell the people that, well, go back for the sake of BEC. The teachers also have families. The nurses also have families. The doctors also have families, Mr. President. This is where they want to hear from you. So, Nana Showboy, please show up. Please show up, Nana Showboy. This morning, we're asking you, and you see, when calls continue to come to you, to speak to your people, and you stay away from your people, it is not a good sign. The understanding is that the vice president will be speaking to us. The vice president was not on the ballot paper, Mr. President. It was you who came to tell us, Mr. President, that Ghana for moon saw me share. Ma bomo baku moon bie, ma bomo preno moon bie, me bomo presa moon bie. You told us it was not Dr. Baumia. It was not any other minister. So when the people are in pain and the people ask 
where is our president? That's the, the Israelites, when they were in trouble, they said, where is our God? Where is our God? So the issues keep coming up and people are serving notice that they will go on strike. We don't want this nation to grind to a halt. And we don't want you, Mr. President, to be speaking on the sidelines of an event. We want you, Mr. President, because we know you have hired people at the Jubilee House to be producing such clips. Organize one, fellow Ghanaians. I've come into your homes. I can do it. Organize just one and speak to the nation, Anna. Because the country wants to hear from you. And if you go around the country or send your people around the country, you hear the mood. They say the country is on autopilot. I'm not the one saying it. People say you don't care anymore because all you wanted to become was to become president. And now that you have become president, you don't care anymore. There are people within your party who are suggesting that you are destroying the party beyond the country. And that after you have finished your presidency, you actually don't care anymore. That These narratives are not good. This is why we want you to speak, because the children who were promised one bar of chocolate, one mug of, uh, of a cocoa drink, hot chocolate uh, you know, every morning, they still are waiting for it. Recently, that project was relaunched. After 2017, when we promised them, we are not delivered for 2018, for 2019, for 2020, for 2021. In 2022, we relaunched it. Still, the cocoa no day. School children can't find food to eat. We keep making promises. That that's a child rights issue. Mr. President, you are a human rights lawyer, for Christ's sake. So where the kiddies are mature day, Mr. President? Please show your face, Nana Showboy. And in showing your face, I want to take us back to 2017, about five, six years ago. A question was asked of you why you had an elephant-sized government. And then you told us that you knew what you were doing and that you, you knew which men you had selected and which women you had selected as well. And you knew what you wanted to achieve. We are the IMF today. And you would hear the economists and the finance people telling us that this whole excuse with Russia, Ukraine, and COVID is not entirely close to the truth. There's been a great level of mismanagement. And the scary thing is that when over 80% of your citizenry believe that you are headed the wrong direction, it's important, Mr. President, for you to speak. So, Nana Showboy, Ado Gai Gai, Ado Preman, please show face. Show up, Mr. President. If you're a showboy, showboys show up. Show boys, they show up and they show working, Mr. President. Daniel, take me back to 2017, when we, 2018 or so, when we asked a question about the elephants that come there, the president defended the ministers. Play that video for me. We want a situation where political office holders are the first to recognize that they serve the public interest, not their own personal interests. I've said it time and again. Those of my party and adherents, my eyes and ears can see what is going to happen. I'm not going to allow that to happen. For instance, as we sit today, in the record time, all the first appointments that have made that I made have all declared their assets. All 36 ministers who are the first lot of appointees that I made have all, as of yesterday, declared and filed their assets with the Auditor General. It is part of a process of reassuring the Ghanaian people that the commitments that we made to protect the public press, the commitments that we made to ensure that we live with a political system that minimizes corruption, which has really ravaged our country and brought us to this low level of economic decline, that there is going to be a systematic attempt to deal with it. The free HS system is being funded from the budget. A more efficient and intelligent. Yeah. To be asked about the sustainability. I'm saying. We have began, we made a commitment. We said that we will begin 2017, 2018 academic year to fund the free senior high school program. 
We have begun from within budget resources, a more efficient use of our resources. We have found the money, money to sustain the process. This matter is not, and I have kept saying it, and I want to repeat it again, it is not a political gimmick. It goes to the heart of our effort to develop our country. Mr. President, you said these things in the past and defended your, the large size of ministers you had. In your second term, some of them are not in government or some have been reassigned and the numbers are pretending to be reduced. The issues you spoke about corruption, people are hungry. The issues about free SHS and all of those conversations, that's the more reason you should be speaking to us, Mr. President. Now, not sure where, please show up. But you see, the moment you leave the space, as I said, your Minister for Parliamentary Affairs and Leader of Government Business in Parliament, whether you like it or not, silent member of cabinet, because they have to hear to understand what it is that the executive want to take to the, to the House of Legislature, the business of government. He champions it in Parliament. So he understands what you're talking about. They have all started talking. Then he played uh, Honorable Asai Chairman Sabunso's video for me, his, his audio. He is the Member of Parliament for the Swami constituency. Listen to him carefully, please. Listen to him. And the Constitution provides that you shall assist the President to evolve policies for your ministry. You are telling us at the appointment committee that we should approve of you. When you go there, you go and learn. So what value addition are they adding to your governments? How are such persons, rudimental learners, going to assist the president in the determination of general policy of the ministries, the superintendent? It is one principal reason why, as a nation, we are marking time. We are stuck. Because many of our ministers do not add value to our governance. That's the truth. And I'm not here talking about the current MPP administration. I refer to all administrations since 1993. The time has come for us to seriously introspect on this. And hasn't the time come for us to place in the Constitution an upper ceiling on the number of ministers of state that we should have? As I've already stated, cabinet ministers assist the president in the evolution of policies. That is according to Article 76 of the Constitution. If that is the case, as I believe it is, why have such a huge number of ministers in the first place? Bosu, you were part of the list of, tall list of ministers in the first administration. When did you realize this? And have you given this advice to the president and he has not taken this advice? You were part of the numbers. You are still part of the numbers, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Minister, Mr. My, my, my leader. You're part of the, of, the, of the, so if you see it as a problem, then you are part of the problem. Say apologies to you. So when did you realize this? When did you realize that some ministers don't bring value to the table? When did you realize this? And you, and you are part of the whole team in parliament that continues to approve ministers that don't bring anything to the table. You sit at the vetting table, you see them, you hear them. They tell you, when I get there, some who couldn't even define what their ministries are about. You still went ahead and approved them. How come couldn't define fish farming? Yet she got the highest number of votes when they called to approve her. So you have the power in parliament to make the decision and stop it. You package people, take them to parliament, endorse them, come back. When they mess things up, then you, you take yourself out and come and you are complaining to us. We won't take that. We deserve an apology if you have not realized it because you have not been in parliament for the first time. You're one of the longest serving members of parliament, Ms. Bosu. When it comes to parliament, you are an institution, you are a tower. There's no debate about that anyway. So now if you are telling us that some of the ministers don't bring value and people come to the vetting table to tell you that they are now going to understand what the president has told them to go and do and you still endorse them when you know in the deepest of, of the depth of your heart that they are not fit for the job, then you have caused us trouble. You have punished us. And you should not be saying this. But I believe you are speaking because the president is silent. The man who had confidence in them, who conferred with you before they brought the list to parliament, is the one perhaps we should be holding. I'm holding you as well for not telling me that, Mr. President, this is a new bee. 
Now you are telling us that some of the ministers don't bring value. And yet we spend all that amount of money. Do you know how much what one deputy minister or one minister earns? How many nurses and how many teachers he could employ? Some nurses take as less as 2,000. Some teachers as less as 2,000. Let's even round it up to say the average teacher takes 2,000 CDs. If one minister takes 15,000 CDs a month, calculate 2,000. 4,000, 6,000, 8,000, 10,000, 12,000, 14,000. Seven people can be employed. Take away the fuel. Take away the accommodation. If you like, add the, uh, uh, the you know, bodyguard. If, if you add, add all those things. We are looking at some figure, 20, 25,000. Can you imagine how many people that could have employed? In fact, at some point in this country, we had an agric minister. We had a minister of state uh, in charge of agric. We had a deputy in charge of horticulture. We had a deputy in charge of, uh, what do you call it, um, crops. We had a deputy in charge of, how? And yet, we are still hungry. We have fisheries ministry. The fisher folks go to sea. They can't find the fishes because petrol. And I'm saying that, how long ago did you realize, sir, that some ministers don't bring value? And that even some of them who do not bring value in the first term has also been, have also been approved for a second term. How long ago did you realize this? And if you have realized this and you are not telling us now that things have gone out of hand, IMF is in town to save the situation, then you have not helped us, sir. I'm sorry. I'm very, very sorry. You have not helped us. And the president told us that we have the men we have the men even you have spoken about breaking the eight we have the men we have the men At the, and you are now telling us that the men that you are supposed to be having some of them do not bring value to the table so why do you put them there and you have sat at the table that has approved ministers right from ndc's time at least from president kufor kufor one kufor two uh mills one uh, Mahama one, Akufuado one, and two. You have sat at the table. Six, uh, what do you call it, terms of parliament. Six terms of parliament. And you are now telling us, Bosu, that some of the people who are brought there do not bring value to the table. And that when they come, they say, when I get to the ministry, I will try and understand what's going on. When they are supposed to be bringing policy. That's a very fair point to make. I say, what, what, when did you realize that the people you are putting there are not fit for the job? You see how we fall, we, we, we fall down flat in the country? You see how we do, we do ourselves in? And yet when the president was defending the ministers, you kept quiet, Bosu. When some of the deputies and ministers were messing up, you kept quiet. Parliament must be seen to be independent. And we expected that when Parliament had 137 on this side, 137 on that side, some of this rubber stamp business will not happen. Yet... I said, how I come say on record? Who could not answer? And it's not me. Everybody is talking about it that she could not answer her questions. She got the highest number of votes. Mr. Kojo Ponkruma was asking about a certain microfinance, was asking about questions about media ownership because if you are the regulator, you can't be in the space. Question marks were put about him. The health minister had questions around his neck about the testing regime at the airport, front line. The finance minister had questions about him. The foreign affairs minister could not tell us who owned that contract. The attorney general could not tell us who owned that contract. We had questions about people. We put out a list and told the people that we were vetting them and that will ensure that people get value for money. We passed all of them and block. Then you come back and come and tell us that some of the people don't bring value to the table. And yet you use taxpayers' money to pay them. Are you being fair to the people? And that is why the president must speak. So, Nana Showboy, please show up. Danny, play that Yeri Kenwu song for the president. Mr. President, Yeri Kenwu, show face. Good morning.